morning. Please be attentive to the following announcements, also on Antioch's website. CMPD, in partnership with Hickory Grove Baptist Church, are sponsoring a food giveaway from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Wednesdays, June 16th at Parkwood Institutional CME Church and June 23rd at 2348 Dr. Weber Avenue. No registration is required. Loaves and Fishes will host a pop-up food share or shares from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at Stratford Richardson YMCA on June 14th, Christ the King Church on June 16th, and Atrium Behavioral Health on Billingsley Road on June 18th. Registration is required. Visit Antioch's website for registration links. Let's stop COVID-19. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is sponsoring hashtag bringing summer back June 20th through 26th for anyone 18 and older who gets their first dose of COVID-19 vaccination or drives someone to their first dose. Each will receive a $25 cash card. Visit Antioch's website for this and other vaccination events. You are invited to share in an exciting book discussion July 10th through July 24th by Zoom. A Journey Through Grace by Reverend Reginald Tuggle is an inspiring story detailing one man's redemption and grace-filled journey out of the grim and limiting depths of poverty and loss. Purchase and begin reading the book now. Order at www.reggietuggle.com and receive an autographed copy. Visit Antioch's website for more information. Attention ladies, save the date, June 26 at 10 a.m. for our next women's ministry activity. To join us on Zoom, send your name and email address to email at antiochfamily.org. You will be blessed. Juneteenth Festival of the Carolinas presents its 24th annual celebration. The Multicultural Free Festival will be June 17th through 20th in the heart of Plaza Midwood, where the festival began or will begin at Thomas and Commonwealth Avenue. Visit Antioch's website for more information. Antioch will host a Walking in the Harvest Summer Food Program weekly beginning Tuesday, June 15th through August 5th. Children ages 18 and younger can get breakfast and lunch at no cost from 12.15 p.m. to 1.15 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. Parents, bring your kids. Kids, bring your friends. For more details and registration information, please visit Antioch's website, www.antiochfamily.org, download our church app, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Come on, give it up for Sister Cynthia Williams. She is often heard and not seen. <laughs> I call her the voice. She often gives our announcements and she gives it audibly and uh, not often seen. And so you had a chance today to see her, the voice. And we thank God for all the times that she have rendered announcements uh, informing us uh, about the things that are happening at Antioch. And so we are thankful. Come on, give her another round of applause. Honk your horns. Let her know how much we are thankful for what she does for us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everywhere. My name is Donnie Garris. I am the pastor of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. We love to call VA. Come on, y'all. Let's make some noise this morning. 
Yeah, we are broadcasting live. We are broadcasting live from parking lot A. And uh, we have some worshipers today all in the parking lot, as well as those who are continually worshiping with us online. And if you're online, I invite you to send up some emojis Amen. to let it be known that you are worshiping with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad for this day. We've come to worship as well as we've come to recognize our graduates. Come on, give it up for the graduates. They have come through so much during this pandemic. They have persevered and they have pressed on. And so we want to do our small part in congratulating them and thanking God for them and all that they have prayed that God would give them the strength to endure. Now let's get this party started. Again, welcome. Thank you for joining us here at the A, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. At this time, we will have our praise team who are going to bless us in song. Hallelujah. Yeah. Call your name, it's a 
morning. I'm Minister Vernie White, and I will be doing the scripture for today. But there is power in the name of Jesus. And scripture lets us know that all we have to do is call on his name. So today we will be reading Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 16 in the NIV version. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if your own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disown the holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed, as you all can see. Amen to the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of all creation, thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. Thank you, God, for allowing us another opportunity to worship and praise your holy name. As we gather in this community of believers, we invite you to come into our presence by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of our sins. Fill our hearts with your love and keep our minds stayed on you. Give us the peace that surpasses all understanding. You are an awesome God, God, full of goodness and mercy for us. Lord, there is much sickness and loss of life, health, strength, and resources. Help us not to worry but to trust in your promises to be with us in times of trials. Provider of all good things, bless each of us according to your will and your way. We love you, Lord, and give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And God, as we prepare to give back to you as you commanded, help us to be generous as you are generous to us. We are your head, your hands, your feet, and your wallet on this earth. You provide us with gifts, talents, and resources to continue your work and to spread your word to your people. So Lord, open our hearts to be generous with our giving to support the mission and ministry of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. All the glory belongs to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. 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 I hope you heard that prayer for the time for giving back to God. 
This is time for our offering. As was said in the prayer, all the glory belongs to God, just as everything on this earth and in this world belongs to Him. And at Antioch, we have three convenient options to give in support of our ministry. If you have our church app, you can give on the church app. You can go online at Antioch's website, www.antiochfamily.org. If you're not in attendance today and you don't have internet, you can mail it to the church, 232 Skyland Avenue, Charlotte, 28205. If you are parked in this parking lot today and have your tithes and offerings with you, at the end of service, bring them up here to, your, to this podium. There will be a basket and someone up here so you can drop your envelopes in at the end of service. We thank you for whatever you have planned to give and we thank you for your generosity toward Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Now we have a special treat today. Charlotte Mecklenburg graduated students over the past few weeks and Antioch had 22 graduates from pre-K through college. 22 from pre-K through college. We have three of them with us today. And if you get the weekly reminder, there was a PowerPoint in the weekly reminder with all the names listed, the schools they graduated from, who their parents are, and where they're going next year. But I would like to recognize the three who are with us today. Graduating from middle to high school, Grace Hunter. Grace, will you come, come on and wave to everybody, Grace. Grace is the daughter of Alex and Angie Hunter. She graduated from Oakland Language Academy and she will be attending Philip O'Berry Academy of Technologies. Woo -hoo! Zion Jefferson. All right, Zion. Zion is the daughter of Latoya Holloway, granddaughter of Barbara Holloway, and she will remain at Sugar Creek Charter School. All right. Gregory L. Singleton, Jr. All back down. All right, Gregory. Son of Ola Earl and the late Gregory Lionel Sr. Singleton, Sr. Greg graduated from Johnson C. Smith University with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and a minor in Retail Marketing. He also graduated cum laude. Cum laude. Thank you, Lordy. His goal is to obtain a career job in his major, become a business owner, and obtain his master's degree. All right, Greg. Thank you for giving to Antioch. We also support our students uh, in the fall, so thank you again. Now, after a selection from our praise team, the next voice you hear will be that of our own Pastor Donnie R. Garris.
been our strength during this whole time. His strength never fails us. Always available for morning, noon, and night. We just want to declare that the Lord has been, will always be, forevermore our strength, our peace, our help, our power. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no
strength come on let it be known let it be known that the Lord has lifted you if the Lord when you were down picked you up turned you around when you said Lord give me strength and he answered your prayer let it be known honk your horns wave your hand put it all in the chat room the Lord is my strength we want to thank Minister Vernie White and the praise team. Come on, let's give it up for them for leading us in our worship up to this time. It's good to be here, isn't it? I don't care if it's being on the outside in our car. It's just good to be here with this sense of gatheredness. We thank God and we're looking forward to when we can go back in the house. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're looking forward to going back in the house where we can in the sanctuary of the Lord continue to offer him glory, praise, and honor. 
Now for the word of God. You know, I've started a series of sermons noting the fact that in the book of Acts that there are a lot of speeches, speeches spoken by the likes of Peter, Stephen, and Paul. And of these, there are a total of eight speeches spoken by Peter in Acts alone. And I thought it would be interesting to preach a series of sermons on what I call Peter's famous speeches. You may recall in the first speech, uh, first sermon, I define what makes a speech famous. They are provocative. They are persuasive. They are informational. They are inspirational. They are stimulating. They are moving. They motivate people to act and they give people reason to hope. I quoted Stephen John who said, truly great speeches transcend time and place, offering wisdom that speaks to every era and stirring souls long after their speaker's tongue have silence. So to me, uh, Peter's speeches that we find in the book of Acts have these qualities and to me qualifies to be called famous. Today's text, we will look at the third of the eight of Peter's famous speeches. And though Peter doesn't put a tag or a title on any of his speeches, I'm taking the liberty to do so for him. So I would title Peter's third speech that comes out of Acts chapter 3. And let me read verses 11 through 13. It says, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. Again, I'm taking the liberty to put a title and a tag to Peter's famous speech. And today I will call it, It Wasn't Us. It wasn't us. I remember on February the 4th, 2015, I came across this interesting story on the Internet's publication of U.S. Today. And they have a section in U.S. Today called Inspiration Nation. They went on to describe the reason for this section being is our way of providing you with that jolt of good news to bring a smile to your day. On February the 4th, 2015, while reading the Internet's version of the USA Today in the section called Inspiration Nation, I came across this story. The story read like this. He was dead for 45 minutes. That's what the doctor who treated 14-year-old John Smith said after paramedics rescued the teen who spent 15 minutes submerged in an icy lake, and the lake was Lake St. Louis in Missouri. A doctor by the name of Dr. Kent Sutterer and his team performed CPR on John for 27 minutes with no success. The question was asked, how long should they continue? It says that John's mother, Joyce Smith, then came into the room and she started praying loudly. What happened next, the article says, defies explanation. Joyce Smith, the mother of John, said, I don't remember what all I said, but I remember saying, Holy God, please send your Holy Spirit to save my son. I want my son, please save him. She said they hadn't been getting a pulse at that time, so all of a sudden I heard them saying, we got a pulse, we got a pulse, we got a pulse, and his heart restarted. 
Dr. Sutterer, who was in the room, went on to comment. He said that he was so shaken and moved by the experience that he said that John Smith's heart was jump-started by the Holy Spirit, listening to the request of his praying mother. Doctors were worried how much brain function he would have, but John Smith recovered, and he went to physical therapy, and he started walking. One of the doctors that was in the room that witnessed this astonishing feat said by the name of Jeremy Garrett, he said what we have witnessed today is a bona fide miracle. A bona fide miracle. Have you ever experienced or I witness a bona fide miracle? By bona fide, I mean a genuine miracle. By bona fide, I mean a real miracle. By bona fide, I mean an actual true miracle. Have you ever experienced or I witnessed a bona fide miracle? First, a bona fide miracle isn't something that happens every day. Gary Richmond said if they were happening every day, they wouldn't be called miracles. Instead, they'll be called regulars. Dr. Charles Swindoll makes sure we don't misunderstand or misde uh, uh, misdefine what qualifies as, as a bona fide miracle. He says miracles aren't regulars. He said a parking place at Christmas time in Nordstrom's parking lot isn't a miracle. The fact that your toothache stops hurting isn't a miracle. Or that your appendectomy scar isn't large, that isn't a miracle. That's a very good surgeon. He said, if we ever personally experience miracles, miracles are every once in a while, maybe once in a lifetime, maybe twice. A bona fide miracle is an event that is not explicable by nature. It's not explained by medical or scientific laws. It's unregular, unregular. A bona fide miracle is unusual. It's unexplainable. It's an unnatural occurrence. A bona fide miracle is an occurrence that shocks, that startles, that stuns, that surprises, that astonishes, that amazes, that dumbfounds and blows people's minds. William Willimon said, miracle is our word for the inexplicable phenomena that appear to arise from sources other than ourselves. Jonathan Walton in his book, Lens of Love, said, the supernatural world often breaks into the mundane. Miracles depict how the celestial can interrupt everyday routine rhythms of life. A bona fide miracle sometimes takes place after we have earnestly and desperately prayed like Joyce Smith. Holy God, please send your Holy Spirit to save, to help, to heal, and to deliver. And if God answers our prayer, a bona fide miracle will cause doctors and scientists and experts to say, it wasn't us. What happened involved a source outside of us. The supernatural broke in and the celestial interrupted the natural occurrences of life. What you have witnessed today is a phenomenon took place that no other personal power could do. It was nothing that we manufactured. It was nothing that we performed by ourselves. It's a bona fide miracle. It wasn't us. What took place in our text was a bona fide miracle. And that's what Peter was getting at in verse 12 of our text when he said, why y'all looking at us? Why do you stare at us if, as if by our own power or our own godliness that we have made this man walk? In other words, Peter said, it wasn't us. Look at this text. It's a very interesting text here. This is the third of Peter's eight famous speeches. It comes after a bona fide miracle when Peter and John were confronted by a crippled beggar to be kind enough to give him some money. That's the story in chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. And it comes to where Peter told this crippled beggar, he told the man silver and gold 
I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Dr. Emmanuel Larty, professor of pastoral theology, care, and counselor at Candler Seminary in Atlanta, Georgia, preached a ministerial ordination sermon. Matter of fact, one of our very own, uh, Eugene Williams, was the one of the candidates that he heard this sermon from Dr. Emmanuel Larty. Dr. Emmanuel Larty preached his ordination sermon titled, Give What You Got. And he came from this test and he reminded those of us who were hearing, whether in the sanctuary or online. He said, when Peter says to the man, what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus. Dr. Larty said that Peter knew he had Jesus to give. Then saying to a sanctuary full of preachers like myself and professors and par parishioners, regardless of who we were and where we were, he asked all of us, have you got Jesus? Do you really have Jesus? Because if you got Jesus, then you'll be able to give Jesus to other people. If you have Jesus, you have all that Jesus is about and you have all that Jesus has. If you have Jesus, then give what you got. Then he kept hammering this on to us. He kept saying to us, if you have Jesus, you got something. You got a lot to give if you have Jesus. So give what you got. But... You can't give what you don't got. <laughs> so do you have Jesus? Peter said to the man, I don't have money. I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I don't have what you're expecting, but I do have what you need. I do have something, and I'm going to give you what I got in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because I got Jesus to give. In the name of Jesus, walk. The miracle story says that Peter took the crippled man by his begging hand and he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. The man jumped to his feet, began walking about, jumping around, praising God aloud. The people who recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging of them for money were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Eugene Peterson version of the Bible, it's called the message version, said they rubbed their eyes astonished scarce believing what they were seeing because what they were seeing was a bona fide miracle a bona fide miracle that had taken place in the life of that man who was once crippled since birth now jumping and leaping in the sanctuary but look at how the next scene of this story opens while the man held on and clung to Peter and John all the people ran together to them in the porch called Solomon's portico. And they were utterly astonished. And when Peter saw the gathering crowd, verse 12 said, Peter asked two questions. He asked, Peter, he said, people of Israel, why does this and when it says he was saying why does this he was pointing at the man why does this this now healed man why does this surprise you and the other question he asked was why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk so it's assumed that Peter was pointing at himself why are you looking at me and John why are you looking at us about this why does this surprise you and you think it was us <laughs> two interesting questions why does this surprise you why does this marvel you why does this cause you to wonder in the bible you have to understand surprise wonder amazement shock sometimes disbelief 
is a characteristic response of those who are not acquainted with the marvelous and miraculous power of God. Yeah, when you find that it says that they wondered or they marveled or they were surprised or they had disbelief, it's often the characteristic of those who are not acquainted. They are not familiar with the miraculous power of God. Can I ask you a question? Is there anybody who knows what the power of God can do? I've told this story several times, but perhaps, I don't know, out here in the parking lot or perhaps here online, you may not have heard this story that I love to tell. It's a story uh, told by Dr. William Watley. He tells a story about this big time preacher who returned to his home church to do a revival service. And he saw someone familiar to him that he thought he knew. And he asked, and sure enough, it was who he thought he, was, he knew. But now she looked differently. She was Mary. Mary he knew from way back yonder, but now Mary in the church smiling yeah she was smiling all full of praise sitting in the mother's corner y'all but she used to be the town drunk all one had to do to get with Mary was treat her nice and get her a box of chicken but now Mary is in church so after service during receiving line Mary came to the preacher and he smiled and he hugged Mary and said Mary I can't believe it's you it's amazing. Look at you, girl. What happened to you? And Mary said, you ought to be the last person to ask and be amazed at what happened. Because the same Lord that saved delivered you from rolling dice and drinking and gambling. Hallelujah. He saved me off the corner. And she told the preacher, she said, you ought to know what the power of God can do. Again, I asked somebody in the parking lot and even online, do you know what the power of God can do? Anybody ever needed the Lord to save them? Anybody ever needed the Lord to help them? Anybody ever needed the Lord to give them strength like none other? Has anybody ever needed the Lord to heal and deliver them? And the Lord showed you what power he has. Surprise and miraculously, he did it. Heard your prayer. Then we are acquainted with what the Lord can do. But this crowd's response was as though they were not acquainted with what the miraculous power of God can do. Peter asked a second question Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness? We had made this man walk. Now when he uses the word power, it has to do with inherent or natural normal ability. It means to have the capacity to always will to do it. So why are y'all staring at us as though we had this power in us to do this? <laughs> that it was something normal in our capacity of ability to do. Why do you stare at us as, as if we can naturally and normally at will do something like this. Whatever power we have is lent power. Whatever power we have is delegated power. Whatever power we have, it comes out from the mighty power of God. We have no miraculous power or healing power of our own. We can't snap our finger and just lay our hands on anybody when we get ready to and they just jump. That's not the power that healed this man. The healing power is not of our own except that was given and granted to us by God from on high. And then he went on to say, and why do you stare at us as if by our own godliness we had made this man walk? And when he used the word godliness, it's another word for holiness. It has to do with inherent piety or goodness or saintliness or righteousness. So much so that it's thought that we are so good, that we are so holy, that we are so saintly, that we are so righteous enough to be worshipped. Peter quickly says to the crowd, why do you stare at us? Don't you dare think about glorifying us. Don't you dare think about worshipping us. Don't you dare think about deifying us because it wasn't us. Listen, y'all, many folks make the mistake of allowing admiration for someone 
what for what someone does or who someone is to grow into exaltation and glorification. I don't care how gifted, I don't care how capable, I don't care how powerful, how prominent, I don't care how much a minister or person means to you. If you exalt and glorify that person beyond proper human bounds, you are setting yourself up for major disappointment. Keep all people, ministers especially, keep all people, ministers, keep them off the pedestal. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, That's right, now, this does not mean we don't expect him or her. It does not mean we don't appreciate their gifts. It does not mean we don't acknowledge God's anointing on them or we don't learn from their instruction. But it does mean all the time, keep in mind that he or she is a human being like we are. And all the time, keep in mind that there is a God and he or she is not God. I have a preacher, pastor friend that when I ask him, uh, Doc, how's the family? His reply to me is always, oh, my family is fine considering who they're living with. Personally, personally, I say this publicly to you. I really appreciate your compliments. I really appreciate your commendations. I really appreciate your congratulations. I appreciate everything that you give to me as a preacher and pastor. But as folks like my wife who live with me, <laughs> ask folks like my wife who live with me, ask her if I'm all that. <laughs> ask her if I'm Superman. <laughs> Ask her if I got some Messiah complex as though I can carry the whole world's burdens and straighten out everybody's problem. Ask her who I really am. Right. Amen. Charles Swindoll says, to you who are in ministry, stay off the pedestals. Don't get comfortable up there. Keep crawling down. If you start liking it up there, I know a great solution. Have a long conversation with your wife. If that doesn't humble you, talk with your children. That never fails to bring the high and the mighty down to earth like fast. Someone else has said, thrones are for kings and queens. Pedestals are for vases and flowers. Sculpture busts are for men and women now dead. Worship is for the living God. The late Dr. Gardner C. Taylor received numerous uh, accolades and honors during his lifetime in ministry. His legacy re reads, he was admired for his eloquence as well as his understanding of Christian faith and theology. He became known as the Dean of American Preaching. Dr. Gardner C. Taylor always relished humility. He is quoted to have said on one occasion, I'm appreciative that people take notice of me but when I go to worship, I'm not looking for any of that. I believe what Dr. Gardner Taylor was saying was, when I go to worship, I'm not looking to be appreciated, nor am I looking to be worshipped. I'm appreciating God, and I'm worshipping God. That's what Peter and John were saying when they asked the twofold question. Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if, as if by our own power or God, we have made this man walk? In other words, when you experience a witness, a bona fide miracle, don't deify, don't worship, don't exalt anybody else but God. It wasn't us. Sadly, there are some preachers today who make ministry about themselves. They are about their own personal glorification, elevation, and exaltation. Sadly to say, there are some ministries, some ministers, there are some pastors, there are some preachers who are about the bling, the clean, and the things. There are some preachers who are about the gold, the glitz, and the glamour. There are some preachers who are about selfish gain and self-advancement and self-exhibition. They're about making their own name great rather than about exalting the name of Jesus. And sadly, though, <laughs> there are some weak minded people who are caught up in the cult of human personalities. They thrive on associated and being groupies of certain celebrity preachers. But I don't care what power a preacher demonstrates. I don't care what charm they exude. I don't care what charisma they exhibit. I don't care what kind of crowd they draw. I don't care what fame they attain. Don't deify. Don't worship. Don't glorify people. 
Mother Teresa was an Albanian Indian Roman Catholic nun and missionary honored in the Catholic Church as St. Teresa of Calcutta. On one of her documentary films that were made about Mother Teresa and her charitable and compassionate work with the poorest of the poor, in one film an interviewer went on a walkabout with Mother Teresa in Calcutta. They went through the homes that she provided for abandoned babies and children and orphans and the dying. And they were just going about and the, and the interviewer just admiring her and her work and her dedication and how she was just sacrificing her time and her life to the poor of the poor. After a series of questions about her devotion and dedication to her work, Mother Teresa stopped and asked the interviewer. She said, uh, why are you asking me all about my work? But you ask nothing about my employer. In other words, she was saying, it's not about me, the employee. It's about Jesus, my employer. <laughs> Peter goes on to declare who is the only one powerful enough and perfect enough to exalt, to praise, to glorify and worship for this bona fide miracle. Look what he says in verse 13. Why do you stare at us? It wasn't us, but the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. Oh, in the book written by Walter Brueggemann titled The Thread of Life, he expounds and expands upon this often found Old Testament description of God. He says not only the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, but he said the God of Sarah, yeah. <laughs> the God of Rebecca, and the God of Rachel. Yeah. The one who came upon hopeless old people and gave them children and new life. The one who came among wandering sojourners and promised them land. The one who came where life was all closed down and promised them a future they could not imagine or invent for themselves. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Sarah, the God of Rebecca, the God of Rachel. Peter also adds the God of our fathers. In other words, the God of our old ancestral stories, meaning the one who's been working miracles for a long time since creation, the one who calls them to existence, the things that do not exist. The since crossing of the Red Sea, the one who makes a way when there appears to be no way. Since the march around Jericho's wall, the one who can bring down an enemy and stronghold since the deliverance of three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro the one who can bring you through and out of every heated circumstance since Daniel in the lion's den the one who can shut the mouths of the most fierce and dangerous adversary since slavery when we were denied and deprived and treated badly and treated less than human we will celebrate on this coming Juneteenth day the one who can give us religion give us freedom give us right and give us dignity he's the one the one that nothing is too hard and one that nothing is too marvelous and wonderful. He's the one who did this and you are to bless his name. I say bless his name. He's the one. Do you know about the one I'm talking about? He's the one. Peter declared this same miracle work in God. Watch this. Has glorified his servant Jesus. In other words, why did you stare at us? It wasn't us because, watch this, any bona fide miracle should redirect people's attention off us and onto Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All praises, all glory, all honor to God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whatever miraculous, marvelous thing God does in our lives should be a testimonial moment. Yeah. And I'm mentioning about Jesus. Yeah. If he's healed you, you ought to say something about Jesus. If he got you out of trouble, you ought to say something about his name. If he ever picked you up and turned you around, you ought to mention something about Jesus' name. Yeah. Notice that twice in Peter's famous speech, he states by whose powerful name the miracle took place. Verse 16, he says, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. And again in verse 16, he said, it's Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that was given this complete healing to this man. In other words, it's in Jesus' name who energizes. It's Jesus' name who inspires. It's Jesus' name who heals. It's in Jesus' name that we are saved. It's in Jesus' name that we are forgiven. It's in in Jesus name that we are delivered it's in Jesus name that he gives us life and life everlasting it's in Jesus name who enables us to do what we've never been able to do before it's in Jesus name there's power in the name when you call 
call on that name. There's a lifting in that name. He gives you strength like none other. It's in his name. Jesus name. This was done to bless Jesus name. This bona fide miracle, this wonder was done to proclaim Jesus. It was done to exalt Jesus, not us. This miracle was done to invite and inspire and increase faith in the name of Jesus. This miracle was done to give a visual aid to the proclamation of Jesus. Peter redirected the crowd and council's attention away from both the healed, crippled, and themselves. And he put it back on Jesus. Listen, y'all, miracles were and they still are always meant to be signs and wonders that point beyond the occurrences to someone else. God honoring his son, Jesus. It was never meant to be just about the miracle. It was meant to be about the miracle worker. It was never meant to be just about the healing. It was all about to declare in the name of Jesus. It wasn't just about the blessing you got. It was about who gave you the blessing. <laughs> it's about blessing that name of Jesus. Jonathan Walton, again in his book, Lens of, War of Love, said, It's so easy to become consumed with attempts to, to defend the supernatural currency of miracle accounts that we lose sight of what the story might be trying to reveal about Jesus. It is interesting that in verses 13 to 26 connected with the miracle, Peter decided to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his third famous speech, Peter related the miracle to the message of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by relating the miracle to the message of the gospel, watch this y'all, Peter was first telling the crowd, watch this, that the same God who worked the miracle was who had raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. And that was saying a whole lot. Yeah. Because, you know, I love to say, if your problem and your sickness and your situation or your issue or your trouble isn't greater than the raising of Jesus from the dead, then God has already proven he can handle it. Right now. If God raised Jesus from the dead, then he has proven that he has enough power to work things out for your situation. Also, the reason why he related this to God raising Jesus from the dead was not only to accentuate the power of God, but by relating the miracle to the message of the gospel of God raising Jesus from the dead, Peter was telling the crowd that the miracle was evidence that Jesus, who was crucified, is risen. Risen and alive enough to still be working miracles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. By telling the crowd that it was Jesus. Perhaps many of the people will become optimistic and hopeful about their situation. Because if Jesus is not dead and is alive enough to still work miracles, such a miracle on this lame beggar, then he can also work the needed miracle in your life. Oh, y'all not catching this thing. If Jesus is still alive and working miracles, perhaps there's a very real option for your healing, for your help, and for your hope. What miracle happened in this man's life perhaps helped doubting believers to believe in a risen, real, and able Jesus. Jesus is risen, y'all. And I couldn't tell you, he's still alive. And he's still able to work miracles in our lives today. So don't you ever, ever, never, ever, never, ever, ever stop believing in miracles. Whatever the situation, when we can't do anything else, when we can't figure it out, when we can't work it out, and we need a bona fide miracle, follow the example of the mother I mentioned in the beginning. Just pray something like, Holy Ghost, send your Holy Spirit. I need you in this situation. I need you to save me. I need you to help me. I need you to heal me. I need you to deliver me. In the name of Jesus. And believe God can jumpstart any situation. Yes, Let me bring this thing to a close. At the beginning, I asked, have you ever witnessed, have you ever experienced a bona fide miracle?
Bonafide miracles happens occasionally, maybe once in a lifetime, maybe twice. Bonafide miracles are unusual. They are unregular. They are unexpected. They are, they are unhuman occurrences. They shock folks. They startle people. They stun. They astonish. They amaze. They blow people's mind. Now, some of us were sure. I saw you. You said, yeah, yeah, Reverend, I, I've seen. I've experienced myself a bona fide miracles. But some of y'all, based on how I defined it, you weren't as sure. What I want to do is suggest that if we are a bona fide Christian, then we have experienced a bona fide miracle. Yeah, those of us who are bona fide, blood-bought, born-again, baptized believers in Jesus Christ, we can sing and shout over the words of the hymn writer who said, it took a miracle to put the stars in place. Yeah. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul and cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. Come on now, some of y'all know where you have been. Some of y'all know what you used to do. But look at you now. It was a miracle that you're now sitting in this park and not giving God praise. It's a miracle. You're sitting here giving him all the glory and the praise and the honor. You know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, it took a miracle to save your soul. God knows what you've been doing, but it took a miracle that God picked you up, turned you around, placed your feet on a road called straight. How many of us know it took a miracle to save me? Child, I ain't got to tell you everything I've done, but all you need to know, it just took a miracle to get me out of that mess, to get me out of that fist, to get me out of that stuff. It took a Anybody, am I looking at any miracles today? Wave your hand in the air. Hump some horn, put it in the chat room, send up some emojis, let some folks know it took a miracle yes, Lord. of love and grace. Yes, Lord. So I ask one last time, have we experienced eyewitness a bona fide miracle? Yes. Yeah, anybody who know to give God glory for being the source of their success. For being the source of their blessings, yeah. the source of their healing, the source of their help, yeah. the source of their graduation, yeah. the source of their salvation. Have any of us ever experienced yeah. I witness a bona fide miracle? Then say so. Let it be known. Let folks know that it wasn't us. Let folks know it wasn't the preacher. Let folks know it wasn't the physician. Let folks know it wasn't any other person. Give all the glory. Give all the praise to God of Abraham, to the God of Isaac. To the God of Jacob, give him all the glory. To the God of Sarah, to the God of Rebecca, to the God of Rachel, give him all the glory. The God of our fathers, the God of our mothers, the God of our ancestors, give God all the glory. The God of creation, the God of the Red Sea, the God of resurrection, give him all the glory. The God of our liberation, the God of our emancipation, the God of our graduation, the God of our salvation, give him all the glory. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy soul of the spirit. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. For he is the one. It's not us. It's all about him. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Gracious God our Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you Lord for reminders who did it all for us. The reason why we live in this very moment, the reason why we are sitting in our cars today or sitting at our homes today and watching this service today is because of your grace and your mercy and your miracles. It's because of you, Lord. We thank you for how you've used others, yeah, but you've used them as your divine instruments. Whether it was a doctor, whether it was a lawyer, <laughs> whether it was a, a, any other person, you used them, but they got their power from you. They got their wisdom from you. They got their ability from you. It all comes from you. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for whether we witness a bona fide miracle in an actual occurrence or not, 
you have reminded us that if we are saved, it took a miracle. So Lord, I pray for someone right now. I pray for someone right now under the sign of my voice who is watching me either in the parking lot or online. Lord, they will submit to your power. They will say, Lord, I need a miracle. I need a miracle, Lord. I need a miracle of love and grace. I need you to do for me what I can't do for myself. I need you to lift me, God. I need you to give me strength like none other. I need you, oh God, to give me what I need. I need you to do for me, God, out of love and grace. So I pray right now for the one who wants to give their life to Christ. I don't care how bad they are because it takes a miracle for any of us to be saved. So, Lord, I pray that you will save them, that they will receive your salvation right now. I pray for those who are looking for a church home. Yeah, this is just one step. Being in the parking lot is just one step of getting us closer to one day being in the sanctuary. But we can still come right now. We ain't got to wait until the doors of the church are open. We can commit right now to being a part of, a, of the membership of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. If there is someone who would like to give their life to Christ or become a member of Antioch Baptist Church, we pray that they would do so at the end of this prayer. It is in Jesus' name we give you glory, give you praise, give you honor. And we all say here and there, amen. amen. If you would like to give your life to Christ or become a member of the Antioch Baptist Church family, we invite you, if you are online, to go to Antioch's website, antiochfamily.org and submit the discipleship form or you can send us an email by clicking to the send email button on Antioch's Facebook page and someone will get in touch with you. But there's an opportunity for somebody right here, right now in this place that if you're in your cars, if you sit in a chair, in the parking lot A, you can come right here. We, can, we got enough room for you to space out. And if you want to give your life to Christ, or if you want to become a member of the church, just come on up here. Get out of your cars. You can wear your mask. We can space you out. We want to know who you are and help you get connected. Connected with Christ and connected with the church. Is there someone? Anybody in the neighborhood? Anybody in the apartments back there want to come on out? I know you've been listening. Come on out. <laughs> We will receive you right where you are. I see some folks way over there in the corner, right over there. I see some people right here over the fence. It doesn't matter where you are. Don't let that be a barrier. Come on out. Come on out. We've always been here and we'll always be here for you. And all you have to do is come. Come. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Won't you come? Come on. Give God some glory. Give God some praise for how he blessed us today. We are thankful again for this opportunity that has been ours to come and to share. I know it's been kind of kind of rough trying to trying to do it online, but we are thankful that we are able to come to the parking lot today. And those of you who are online, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Let me give some thank you as we bring this thing to a close. Come on, y'all. What you see here, it wasn't me. <laughs> It wasn't me. It wasn't us all. It was more people than just, just me. Come on, give it up for Elliot Burke and James Stevenson and the stage setup crew. Wherever you are, wave your hand. But this stage here has been made possible by Mr. Elliot Burke. His school loaned us this stage, and he and Brother James Stevenson came out here. They're, you know, they, I'm not going to say they're old. <laughs> But they were struggling with this thing, y'all. There was this is this is some wood here, yeah. and so but they put this thing together, provided the carpet, the podium here, and so come on, give it up for Brother Ella Burke, Brother William James Stevenson, any of the crew that came around and put all this stuff together, all these fly Laverne. Thank you for, for putting your touch to this. Also, let's say thank you to the worship media team. Look at them right here, still carrying on the worship media team who have put this together for us to be seen online 
want to thank Val, Shakita, Hope, and Vernon. Come on, Michael Baker and the praise team and the musicians that we have. The drummer, we ain't heard a drummer and the bass guitar in a while. Thank you all for coming. And the sound technician, I don't know who he is, but we thank him. He's been running around here enough to be seen. I want to know who he is. <laughs> but, but thank you, sir. This is equipment. Come on, y'all. Come on. This is equipment. I want to say thank you to the musician, the sounds, tech, praise team, media team, ushers and greeters. Yeah. Where y'all at? Nancy Lyles, the great, all of y'all been meeting us out there, making sure that we were greeted and with a smile and giving the right information. Project at Sale, thank you for honoring our graduates. Again, congratulations to our graduates. Remember, it's going to take the power of God to get you even further than where you are. The intercessory prayer team, let me go online to say thank you all. They did have their corporate prayer uh, this morning. Thank you for carrying on and you prayed for us. And the Lord held back the rain. Come on, y'all. Thank God for that. Trustees, trustee Marcus Byrne and all the parking lot attendants and Donnie and all of y'all and Caleb and all of y'all been running around here parking cars and Cedric. Thank you, deacons, deaconess, anybody else who had a hand in putting this together. And give yourselves a round of applause for coming here and for being a part of this. Again, uh, we hope that you have brought an offering <laughs> of your choice uh, because ministry is still going on. Ministry is going on. We're excited about a youth summer food program that we're going to start on Tuesday uh, to start serving those in the community 18 years and younger. 18 years is free food. We have been able to make a connection with an organization that they would give us the food. All we got to do is say, give it out. And so we're starting that on Tuesday. Donnie, I mean, I mean uh, Darlene McQuarrie, Gwen Martin, and Shell Haywood, uh, and some of our drivers, um, uh, Brother Pringle, uh, who is Brother Lindsey, uh, Brother, oh, I'm about to get in trouble now, uh, Brother Clyburn, and Brother... Uh, Carter, 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 Carter. They're going to be going to a certain site to pick up the food and bring it here, and we're going to pass it out to the kids. 18 years and younger. If you're hearing me over this in the community, send your kids out. 18 years and younger on Tuesday at 1215. 1215 to 115. So in other words, I just say that, y'all, we've been still doing ministry. Yeah. So we hope that you continue to bless the church in your giving. Because we've been still doing ministry outside the walls. Outside the walls. So at the end of the service, uh, can I get a couple of ushers? Nancy, can you all get, come up here and find something large enough? I know we're going to get a big, large offering today. So you're going to need more than your hands, something. Y'all stand on both sides of these. There, there you are. So at the end, just come out of your cars or wherever and come and bless the church today. All right, I think that's all. We good? We good, Shakita? We good, Michael? We good? We good, y'all? All right, let's, let's, let's pray. Gracious God, again, thank you for this day. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless for the master of sin and great joy. To the God who is able to keep us through this pandemic, keep our hopes alive, and keep us going strong. To the all-wise God, be glory, power, dominion, now, hence, forevermore. And we say amen. 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 God bless. We're through. Please come, please come. Nancy is here and Penny McCoy is here. Come bless the church. And we need a we need a breakdown crew. So the same crew that set up, we need a breakdown. So don't